Hi, my name's Paul from Ebon Sky Studios and today I'm going to be doing the second video in the series showing how you can create your own RPG audio game using Sable. So, in today's video we're going to add a couple more objects to the map we created in the first video. We're also going to show you how you can add some NPCs to that map and I'm going to give a brief example of how the event trigger system works too. Now, one of the things that has been asked quite a lot since the first video is people have been asking whether it's possible to add their own sounds to Sable. The simple answer is yes, you can add sounds for pretty much anything you like in Sable. So, if you want to create your own step sounds, music, ambience, that's absolutely fine and it's also really easy to do as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the video just by showing how that works and how easy it is to add your own sounds. So I'm going to load File Explorer and find a sound which I've saved to my desktop. Windows E, this PCS device enter, shell for E, even sky side enter, even sky D, dog bark. Okay, so we've got a sound here called dog bark, which I'm going to copy. Copy selection to clipboard. Now I'm going to find the Sable folder. Store SS, Sable 1.59. Here it is. Enter, shell folder view. Item. Now in the Sable folder, I'm going to find the sounds folder. SS, sounds, enter, sounds, items view. Now what I want to do is I want to create this dog bark as a pannable sound, so I'm going to find the panning sounds folder. P, panning underline sounds. There it enter, is. Shell I'll open that, and in here I'm going to paste the dog bark. Paste it from clipboard, dog bark. Now, the next time I load Sable, it will automatically recognize that sound and it will add it to Sable automatically for me. So when I bring up the panning sound, it will have automatically added an option called Dog Bark, which I can select and place the dog bark on the map. The same technique can be added, uh, used for adding lots of other sounds to lots of other things. So if you want to create steps, like say enemies, equipment, just add the sounds to the appropriate sound folder and the next time you load Sable, those sounds will be there as options you can select. So, that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load Sable and we'll start the demonstration. I'll show you how the dog barks appeared in there and also the other stuff we're going to discuss in this video too. So, let's load Sable. Enter. Sable Engine Alpha 1.59. Evan Sky Studios. Sable Pre Alpha by Evan Sky Studios. Main menu, please select. Okay, so let's start by loading up the project we were working on in the last video. Play game, load project, please select project, Sable demo. There it is. Please select map to load. We need to choose which map, map we want one. to load into, but there's only one map, Opening so let's map select one. that one. And here we are, we're back where we left the last video, so we're just in front of the entrance to the inn. Entrance to the inn. There we go. In front of the so inn. So, we've added the panning dog bark sound to the to the panning sounds folder. Now, if I bring up the panning menu in Sable now. Panning sounds, birds, scroll through the options. common rain, crows, dog bark. There we go, it's automatically added as an option I can select in the panning sounds. So, if I select that, and now I can place the dog, bear, bog bark, dog bark, sorry, wherever I like on the map. There we go, and that's how easy it is to add sounds to Sable. Now, I don't necessarily want the dog barking at this point in the map, so I'm going to delete that from the map. Are you sure you want to delete dog bark? Yes. Yes. Dog bark deleted. And there we go, that's been deleted. So, what I did want to show though is how you can create and add NPCs to maps in Sable. So what I'm going to do is bring up the object menu. Objects. Barrel. Building creator. Chest. Container. Door. Fast travel waypoint. Merchant. Person. Oh, there we go. Right. Please enter person's name so what we're going to do text. is we're going to create uh, another member of the Ebon Sky Studios team. So, Justin. Justin, enter. Please enter person's description. Uh, we're not going to worry about giving them the description. description. Key edit. Type Wait, edit. you like Type to use text. a pre-recorded voice? Okay, so NPCs in Sable, you can either give them uh, voice lines you pre-record yourself and you just add them in the same way we added the dog bark sound to the voice lines folder or you can get them to speak TTS. Now this particular one I'm going to get to speak some voice yes. lines since I asked Justin to record me some voice lines just before this presentation. Select sound set. And the next thing we select is a sound set. Now you can create your own sound sets. This just determines what sort of radar sound will play when you get near the object, uh, near the NPC and also um, what sound will play when you actually uh, meet or, or meet or land on the same space as the NPC. So let me show you what I mean. Mail. Uh, let's select that as mail. Does this person set the player a task? Do they set you a task? We're going to say yes. no. No. Please select the initial speech that will be and spoken when the person is first interacted we, with. Here's where we need to add the lines of dialogue that uh, Justin recorded for us. So let's find those. Justin's voice lines one. There's the first Would one. Would you like to add more dialogue? Do you want more? Yes. yes. 
Let's Select find the, the person's name. Justin's voice. Justin's voice lines too. Would you like to add more dialogue? We're gonna say yes. Yes. Now the Select the person. Justin's Justin's voice lines too. Justin's voice lines three. Would you like to add more dialogue? Any more? We're gonna say no at this point. And now all we need to do is place Justin on the map. So let's place him here. Justin. And there you go. So now if I walk away from Justin, you'll hear the radar sound, which is like people speaking. And then when I um, actually encounter Justin, it will make the uh, uh, the male coughing Justin. <laughs> like so. Um, now, I'm not actually going to interact with him just yet and let you see those speech lines. I want to set another NPC, uh, create another NPC first. So I'm going to do this um, in, front of entrance in the actual in itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create somebody here. So let's bring up the objects, objects. menu. Let's go to person. person. Enter person. And this is going to be the innkeeper. -er. Keeper. Enter. Please enter person. I'm not going to worry about giving him a description. Would you like to use a pre-recorded voice? Do we want to use a pre-recorded voice? We're going to say yes. no this time. No. And this way they'll uh, use TTS speech instead. Select sound set. Uh, we're again just going to set them as a male. Does this person set the player a um, task? But we are going to say they're going to yes. set us a task. And what we're going to do is we're going to get them to set us a task or the player a task which will ask the player to go and find them an item uh, in this instance we're going to get them to find a small bronze statue so let's say yes here we give the key to this task completion key and a meditation. so um what we need to do here because we've Select asked it the to key. that the npc is going to set us a task we need to create what's called a task completion key so i'm going to call this sorry small bronze statue Statue, enter, edit, uh, type of text. If you would like the key, to have a description, we can say no. physical text. item which the player will hold. And now we can decide whether this is a physical item. So it, because it is something we want them to find, we're going to say yes to yes. it being a physical item. But you can also set items to be invisible items. This basically just means um, the player doesn't know they've actually received them. But it basically, it would the player would receive it at a point when the task's complete. And it would indicate to Sable that the task's been complete and then fire whatever task completion uh follows that. But anyway, uh, let's set this as a physical item. Please enter the text that will be spoken when the NPC is interacted with. This is the text that will explain the task request the NPC is setting the player edit type and text. Okay, so here's where we type the text that will be speaking, spoken when we interact with the NPC. So I'm going to keep this really simple and just, uh, I, please find me the small, uh, Statue, enter. Please enter the text that will be spoken when the and NPC is interacted the with before the task request is complete. Edit. Enter the text. next line of text. This is the text that will be spoken if we come back and speak to the NPC before we finish the task. So let's just, uh, I thought I asked you to find me the statue. Statue, enter. Please enter the text uh, that will be spoken when the NPC is interacted with once the, the task is complete. Edit. Which will be spoken once we return to the NPC with the item. So just thank you. You enter. Please enter the text that will be spoken and if you interact finally, with the NPC once the task is completed. Type enter text. the text which is spoken if we return to the NPC after he's already thanked us. So let's just say, now enter edit type and text. Okay, so I may not win any creative writing awards for that, but again, I leave the creative writing to the uh, creative team. This is just uh, to show how it works. But anyway, let's place the innkeeper. The innkeeper. There we go, he's placed there. Now we need to find uh, or add a way that the player can find this bronze statue. So let's come up here and let's add a chest Objects. and put the bronze statue Barrel. in it. Building chest. Please select items so you would like to put in. So we can now choose what we want to go in the uh, chest. So we're going to select small bronze statue. Please select items you Do would like to put in the chest. we want to put any more items in there? We're going to say no. Is the chest locked? Is it locked? No. no. Uh, so let's place the chest. Chest. And there we go. It's placed the chest. Uh, now, normally a chest would have a radar sound as we walk away, but we're just in the point of updating radar sounds, which is why there's no radar sound playing. So I just have to remember where that is for the moment. The innkeeper. Okay. Exit to the end. And the last thing I want to uh, show in the demonstration before we actually see how this all works is I said I'd give a brief ex explanation as to how event triggers work. So you can attach an event trigger to any object in the game. So a person, might be a barrel or a chest or a door. And when the player interacts with that particular object, it will trigger a certain event. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a trigger event for this door to play a cutscene when we go through. So I'm going to bring up the trigger event uh, menu to attach trigger event to this door. 
Please select if you wish for a cutscene or music okay, change. Okay, so yes, if we not, do want to change map scene, music. So let's cut select cutscene here. Please select a cutscene you would like to play uh, the first time. The map it, demo the intro. Cutscene. Evan now, Sky logo. Just for the purpose of this, I haven't recorded an actual cutscene. I'm just going to use the logo, so it will fire the logo basically as the cutscene when we go through the door. Enter any text you would like spoken while cutscene uh, is playing. We, we could choose to have some no text spoken, speech edit. spoken when the cutscene's fired, but we're going to say no to Escape that. Escape action is text. also triggered. Select from below. Okay. Choose none for no additional action. Also with event triggers, you can select certain actions to happen. So for instance, alter encounter you might, rate. Uh, it might alter the encounter rate on the map. Battle. It might spark a battle. There's lots, lots more as well. But again, we'll maybe cover these in more details in another video. But for the moment, we're just going to do the cuts. And do we want any text spoken after the event trigger? No. Event event trigger added. And there you go. It's added that to the door. So. What I'm going to do is we're now going to show how all this stuff works uh, by going into debug mode, which kind of simulates the play game mode. So let me Search just go ahead. Edit, type in text. Escape. Please select project options. Stable engine. Alpha Please select. Okay, so let's enter go to debug, debug mode. mode. To enter debug mode, it's going to make mode. me save the game first. Yes. Saving. Debug mode activated. Okay. So, one other thing which I haven't shown yet is if you ever want to get lost in the map, you can just press the coordinates key X. X7. Y7, and it gives you a coordinate along with the wood. tile type you're standing on. Or if you're in a building, you can actually press the L key to look around and it will let you know what's in the building. Let me show you that. Around you. To start tracking, please select item below. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Exit to the inn south got the exit one, to the inn, east and it one. gives it a direction from where we're standing. Chest north three. There's east the chest. Three. The innkeeper south And there's one, the innkeeper. East three. So right, anyway, let's go and interact with the innkeeper here. The innkeeper. There we go. So let's press the action key to interact with him. Hi. Please find me the small bronze statue. There we go. Let's interact with him again with the uh, action key. I thought I asked you to find me the statue. Now, if we keep uh, trying to speak to him, he'll just keep saying that until we actually find the statue for him. I thought I asked you to find me the statue. So let's go to the chest and grab him that statue. So yes. be, ah, here it is. So let's press the action key to open the chest. You found the following items. And let's see what's in here. Small bronze, There's the statue. bronze statue. Let's take that. The chest is empty. Again, let's go and give that to the innkeeper then. The innkeeper. Serious, let's press the action key. Thank you. There we go, so we've given him the uh, thing. Now, you could again set event triggers that maybe he'll give you something for getting that, but obviously for the moment that just demonstrates this, and if we speak to him again, he should just tell us to leave him alone. Leave me alone now. Okay, so right, let's go inn. through the door and watch how this cutscene fires that I set on the door. There we go. Okay, it may be not the uh, best thing to use as a cutscene, as uh, obviously you could make more elaborate cutscenes, but again, this is just for the purpose of the demo. Hopefully, it gives you an idea how that works. So, let's go and find the other NPC we've the got end. out here. Just in. There he is. So, right, now this is the uh, NPC which has got some voice lines, uh, pre recorded voice lines. So let's show you how this works. Let's press the action key. Howdy. There we go, first line of speech, and uh, if we press the action key again, we'll get the second line of speech. Hope y'all are enjoying the Sable demo. Just don't mention that Z axis to Paul. He don't like it much. <laughs> Cheers for that, Justin. Uh, the Z axis is a bit of an ongoing joke here. We uh, uh, the Z axis was something that was probably added about halfway through the uh, actual development of Sable. So we were pro it was probably about 10,000, 15,000 lines of code in. And anyone who codes will tell you how much of a pain it is to add something that big to the uh, to an engine um, that late in the development but uh, yeah so I, I always get ripped about that thanks again for that Justin anyway he did leave us a third line of speech let's see what he says for the third line hopefully nothing regarding the z-axis this time hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video take care now there we go okay and that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it for the video so like I say there will be more videos in the series and we'll continue to add stuff to this map and um, I hope you've enjoyed it uh, if you do like you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and that way you should get notified when we post new videos or you can also like our Facebook page and again we always post the videos there so that way you'll be notified when we post new videos again I've really enjoyed making the map so I hope you've enjoyed listening to it thanks from the team here